Hey guys, I'm Lucas and this is the story of my Kerbal Space Program. Welcome to the Never Ending Glory. In the last episode I've been working on a space station and I did not finish it. I need 4000 liquid fuel to fulfill the contract so fueling up is next. Beyond that I want to use it to save stranded Kerbals from space and for that I have to bring some rescue pods as well. But first things first, I have enough funds to finally upgrade my research and development complex which is apparently necessary to transfer fuel between tanks. Next up I do grab some contracts to place satellites into polar and equatorial orbit and since I'm building a rescue station, Gwens and Kerman shall not suffer any longer as well. These orbits are quite high and where is… oh, Gwensen somehow managed to fall off the moon as it seems. I hope my parts will be able to reach so far. This is my glory refueling ship. It can hold up to 4000 units of fuel from which some is needed to reach the station. But it is okay since my station is not completely dry. Anyways, I will boost it up with my 20 ton glory launcher which I have saved as a sub assembly to reuse it for future missions. Now I wait a little for the station to fly by my space center to decrease the overall time in orbit. This should do it. And launch. It's not the most economy friendly launcher but I will try to recover the complete upper craft and I have equipped it with parachutes for that matter. The trajectory should have been a little steeper but no problem for Jeb. Now a quick coasting phase and if everything goes according to plan I can directly burn towards the rendezvous with my station. Yep, that looks good. Less than an orbit and here it comes. Marking the docking port as a target and… Docking confirmed. Now I refuel it quickly and wait before my station is above the desert so I can deorbit my ship again. It wasn't enough fuel to fill the tanks completely but the rescue pods will hold some as well which should be enough to fulfill the contract. Ok, here we are. Goodbye Glory Station 1. As you may see I have put a heat shield behind the engine just in case it explodes during re-entry but it wasn't necessary which is good to know I guess. The water got a lot softer since last episode and Kerbalkind is not entirely sure what galactic event could have caused such a disturbance in the structure of space time. One thing is for sure though, something screwed with the natural constants. Anyways, this should make splashing down in the ocean a lot safer or, or not. I've recently learned there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. So I guess we at least learned that heat shields and landing legs sink. Now a little science and off to my next mission. What you now see is Glory Capsule Delivery 1. It looks a little ridiculous but I decided to bump up the fuel just to make sure I can reach Gwensen with it. And below is my 20 ton Glory launcher again. I do really need to get something done again because my funds start to decrease dramatically. Ok, 3, 2, 1 and lift off. And again such a flat trajectory. I think I'm not used to such low thrust to weight ratio rockets but I ultimately reach space anyways. Oh I forgot to wait for my station flying over it so I decide to go for another mission while my ship catches up. That's Glory Probe 1 equipped with some basic science instruments like thermometers and pressure sensors. It also has antennas so I can transmit data back home. It won't be much but better than nothing I guess. To bring it to orbit I use my new 2 ton Glory launcher which uses 4 strap on solid rocket boosters which is rather cheap compared to the mission reward of 80,000 funds. Ok let's go. I'll wait until the launch site aligns with the polar orbit so I don't have to do inclination changes later on. This looks good. I can now simply fly north and go Glory Probe 1. I throttle down the boosters a little so I don't get too quick in the lower atmosphere. Varying the thrust of solid rocket boosters by the way is done with different solid propellant shapes. In the middle is typically such a tunnel and the thrust is proportional to the surface area. The more surface area the more thrust it has. As you can imagine the surface which is exposed to the flame increases while the booster burns up all by itself. This would mean a booster had its maximum thrust at the end. Which would be kind of weird since the rocket is much more heavy at launch than further up. This is why boosters use more complex shapes or profiles. 
An example for that is such a star tunnel. As it burns up, the tips get more obtuse over time and the total surface area stays roughly the same. This is how constant thrust is achieved, but anyways, this happens behind the scenes and I think it's nice to know. Meanwhile, my probe is on its way and I can return to Glory Capsule Delivery 1. It has almost catched up. Now a quick burn and we're there in no time. There it is. I will now try to dock each one on a different spot. This is number one. Now number two. Three. And four. Ha! <laughs> Easier than expected. And I thought the asymmetrical thrust will spin me out of control. Okay, Jeb can now return back to KC again. The next launch is just ahead and will be pretty similar to the one before. Glory Probe 2 is not different from Probe 1 but will head for an equatorial orbit instead. Not quite at KC but maybe I can get some new surface samples over here. Again, a happy accident. Wow, this is quite a distant orbit. I hope I will have no problems reaching it with the amount of fuel I have. I guess I have to find it out. And launch. Not again. I think I need more practice with these. All that steering costs a lot of fuel. Anyways, Glory Probe 2 is on its way. Time to switch back to Probe 1. It's almost at its apoapsis. Now a little science and make sure the solar panels are pointing to the sun before I fast forward to the circularization. That is easy and I was worried about the fuel. Now hold it steady for 10 seconds and the contract should be fulfilled. Perfect. Meanwhile Probe 2 has gotten a little closer as well and looking at the trajectory I could have probably used a gravity assist at the moon. Maybe next time. I do the burn a little early before I overshoot the planned orbit. But I am now confident that I have enough fuel to correct it while circularizing at the same time. Easy. Now some further corrections and I am finished. Next up I can finally rescue Gwens and Kerman. And since I have unlocked some nice plane parts, I can start exploring Kerman a little more as well. I really need some science to unlock bigger rockets, but that is another story of the never ending glory.